Hello everybody, give me y'all a chance to log on. Um, all right, I want to welcome y'all to Sex Talk with Sharonda. And today, we, my husband and I, Spencer Parker, will be talking about the family structure. So, I want to give everybody a chance to actually uh, be able to log on because I don't want y'all to miss anything. And I want y'all to start sending in your questions so that we can start answering your questions as we're actually going live. And I want to give a little background information um, about why we chose to do this video. Okay? This started from someone else's Facebook post, and they were basically uh, talking about um, in 2018, why is it that because men uh, expect women to contribute, that they can't get respect in the relationship if they expect the woman to contribute equally. And this person actually went on further to say that they were willing to um, not only give half on everything in the house, but they were willing to um, actually help with chores and certain things that traditionally have been um, kind of reserved for the woman. Reserved for the woman that they were willing to do some of these shows. So my response to that person was um, that a woman would never respect them if she was expected to give half. And I gave my reason why she would not respect him if she was expected to give half. So my husband saw the video and I'm just gonna let him. See, that's why I come in. Okay. Because I saw the video and I, like, first of all, I agree with everything my wife was saying, but in the business that we in, like, we in the business of teaching, right? So sometimes you might not be able to, like, the way, it, it's all about how you deliver stuff. Like, we was talking, she was, her video, I think, was more catered to the people who more, who, who already feel the way, you know, she that feel, I felt. That, that I already know the order and the structure, and we trying to reach people who don't necessarily know, uh, not, and we don't want to. He don't like, want to offend the kind of, It was kind of like, um, it was a little bit too aggressive, in my opinion, in his opinion. for the for the uh, the audience that she was trying to reach. So I was like, you know, we got to give the whole structure, the order from 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 the ground up, or how things supposed to go, so people could be able to receive it and understand. Because you had some people like. Oh, if I'm out there working and she got a slave, what's she going to be doing? Like, you got to break it down. You got to have some common sense, like, and, and, and use your head, man. You got to think. Because what my wife was saying, she was telling y'all about the basics, about how the, the, the structure go, the foundation, how everything. Because even with us, like, I need a helpmate. Like, we, we don't, we, we work together. We do, we, we, we work together. It's like, you got to have some kind of balance and some boundaries. Everybody don't have to take on the responsibility of everything at all times by themselves. Okay, so let me, before I cut you off, let me say this. We come from a faith-based background, yeah. okay? I want to make sure I put that out there because if you do not come from a faith-based background, you then you understand may not the understand the order that we are talking about because when we're talking about the order, at the very top of the hierarchy is God, is God okay? So then you got under the, God comes the husband. The husband. Not man, the husband. The husband. Then the wife. The wife. Then the kids. Then the kids. That's how they That's come. the order. So I want to make sure that we on the same page with yeah. you. Because we know the order, but we want to make sure that you understand the order that yeah. we are and, following. And what we're talking about is that order. It, we're not talking about your boyfriend, your live in no. your mate, your, your, no. your live in. The dude who you just started messing with or dealing with a couple of days ago, like we're not talking about that. We're talking about family, order, responsibility, 
who who accountable to who and for what. That's what Correct. that's what the order is. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So so go ahead. So when you break everything down, like everything my wife was saying last week, it makes sense. But for those who don't understand, like we we come to explain it a little more and get a little more in depth with it, if that makes sense. Because last week it may not have been easy for some people to receive because it was just like, oh, she's just talking about the man. But I said, that if you want to reach everybody, you got to talk about everybody's role, what everybody's supposed to be doing at the same time. So you give everybody their positions, everybody their role, so you won't be sitting over here talking about, oh, you the man, you're supposed to be doing everything. And the, lady, the woman sitting over here like, okay, like she don't have I don't have no responsibility. Yeah. No, that's not how that goes. Everybody have a role to play. But the thing is, everybody have to respect their role and everybody have to play their role. Okay, so let's talk about the role of the head. Strictly the head. What is the responsibility? What What is the responsibility of the head? What is the head supposed to do? Why should the head be respected? Let, let's, let's talk about the head. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to start reading some of these um, questions. So there now, we the head of the household is supposed to be the, um, that's the person who, who God going to deal with when it comes time to answer, but for, for to be held responsible. So in the household, you got the husband, you got the wife, you got uh, the kids. Like everybody up in there is responsible. Everybody got a role. So when you talk about um, the head, the head is just the person that, 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 that go to God on his family behalf. That's the husband's role. He's supposed to provide for his family. He's supposed to do everything. He's supposed to be responsible for his family. Basically. Because when God came, like, and we read the Bible, and all this stuff went on with the forbidden fruit or whatever, who did God come to talk to? God came to the husband. He never went to Eve. He never went to Eve. He now, never went to Eve. Eve was punished because of what she done, but she he took the punishment to the husband, and the husband was punished too. Mm -hmm. So even though that he didn't take that fruit and, and, and do what he did, like he still partook in the action. So he still had to pay and he still was the one who was held accountable even though it was somebody else who did the deed. That's correct. So that's the whole purpose of you saying that the man is the head. Even though if your wife go out there and make a mistake in the eyes of God, like you held responsible. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your whole family got to be held accountable for that. Like your whole family going to be held responsible for the actions of one. Okay, and let me just say this here. When you are a wife, your head is your covering, yeah. okay? Your covering is your protector, your provider. They intercede, like my husband said, he goes to God on the behalf of the family. Not saying that the wife can't go to God on behalf of the family, but your head, mm -hmm. your covering goes to God on behalf of because the family. Because if the husband is not going to God, like it's the wife's job to go to God on his behalf and the family's because mm -hmm. you got to take him to his head that's if right. you're not doing what he's supposed if to If you do. have a husband that is not doing the things that he's supposed to be doing, your job is not to complain, nag, Mad, belittle, talk. drag him under the bus, throw him under the bus. I'm going to tell, tell you what it was for me. It was coming back and telling me how good church was because I was in the same position. wouldn't go get up and go to church for nobody because I felt like me and God got to understand it. Did I ever bother you about going to church? She didn't bother me about going to church. But when she started going to a church that excited her, you got to understand when you are equally yoked and y'all y'all are one, like that's going to rub off some kind of way. That spirit going to get into you whether you want it or not. So it's not for you to push God on your mate. It's for you to bring the God in you to your mate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you bring that to him and they supposed to receive it and they respond. If they love you, unconditional love is going to make it all work out. That's what's going to happen. Like, y'all come to each other in love at all times. And what you see is positive positivity going to come from it. If you come from a negative place, you're not going to get nothing but negativity. Okay, so let's talk about um, this household breakdown. Because we know that the, the man is, the head is the, the provider, responsible for providing. So, a lot of my video last week was about... Providing the basics the basics. So I, I want to go into detail because this is what a lot of men do not understand yeah. what I was saying. Okay Your helpmate she can contribute to the household. 
However, as the head, you have a responsibility to provide a household for her to contribute to. Meaning that even if her hours get cut, even if she loses her job, even if something happens for whatever reason that she's unable to bring in an income, yeah. you all should not be homeless because she doesn't have an income or because she's not bringing in as much. Now, for me, your cable might get cut off or something may, a car might get reposed or is, something you're not like that. Gonna but you're not going to be under the bridge. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be in the dark. You're not going to be smelling. You're not going to, you should not, in other words, as the responsibility of the head, you should provide the basic essential shelter, now, lights, What somebody was saying food. was, well, if I'm, if I'm paying everything and, and she going with it and she just banking her money, what she, I ain't going to be her slaving, that's not what's going on. What should she be like, doing with her money? She should be putting her money back into y'all, back into y'all household and saving. Like that's just that's just it. Like if you got a, a a helpmate, that's what they are, a helpmate. If you providing all the essentials and all the extras, and she is contributing, like she got to contribute. Like it's not saying that oh she get to work and take her money and not do nothing with it. She get to she, take she her money and be even more responsible. She don't get to just go out and buy bundles because something came out a new bag because it came out. She don't get to go splurging on yeah, herself, he elaborate shopping, spirit to, free, to, to, to do everything constantly you know. taking care of the, all, getting everything these children say that they want. Because let me tell you about children. They don't have no breaks. And your children kids, always going to want. No matter how much you give them, they're going to constantly want more. You will, It's like pointing to what I call a bottomless pit. You will never thing, feel it. In relationships, like kids will come between mothers and fathers they will become come in between parents they will play you against each other and you have to watch for that because kids know they're gonna go to the mom the path of least resistance and daddy might be a lot more strict or a little more strict or whatever the case may be and they will go to one versus the other and say oh yeah mama told me this and daddy said no and then y'all arguing and the child got what they want but let me tell you what i had <laughs> to learn to do when our daughters would come to me about something my response would be, let me talk to your daddy about it. Let, let me discuss this with your daddy. I would not, and, and I had to learn that because what I would do is just be like, oh yeah, you could go. Oh yeah, I'll buy it. Oh yeah, this, that, the other. And then all is happening and he would have no idea what is going on. But as a young wife, I had to learn to tell my children, look, I can't give you an answer right now. Yeah. Let me talk to your dad about it. And then I would go to him and talk to him about it. And sometimes he would be in agreement and then other times he would not be in agreement. And they would just have to accept it for whatever it was because he is the head and he made the ultimate decision. Yeah. And that's a lot of this stuff, like, this is what works for us. You know what I'm saying? For like, us. Your head and, and, and your situation might, it, it, yeah, like, y'all might work together a, a different type of 50 50. But what, what, what always got to remain is, is the, the, the communication. Y'all got to keep communication open because y'all got to think about it in the relationship y'all want. So you can't move just half of you. You got to move the whole, the whole thing. thing. So y'all got to work together in everything that you do because you can't let them kids come between you. You can't let the outside world come in between you because y'all got to come together as one and y'all got to work together for to deal with all of this, to, to deal with all the outside stuff that's coming in. Y'all can't divide each other and, and, and work like that, trying to fix stuff. It don't okay. work like that. So then let me go on a, a bit further to say, okay, Sometimes you have households where one may make more money than the other, right? I'm going to just use the woman for an example. Suppose she brings in more than her husband, okay? This is just my personal opinion. Nothing should be based on her because at any day her circumstances can change. I just met somebody who was basically the breadwinner and having to sit down because they're about to have a baby. So that means your whole household is, you, you basically put a responsibility on your head that they can't meet because you set your lifestyle up on you and not what your head can afford. Everything should be based on what your head can afford and guess what, if you have a, a, a decent job or whatever, then put that to the side so that guess what, you can put y'all in a better situation to yeah. where because maybe you don't have to fall short. Then you got something to fall. You got back something on. to fall back on. And not only that, if you have a head and they can afford only a certain amount, 
and you bringing in X amount of money. If you put money to the side, then guess what? Y'all don't have to have a car note to, to create another debt. Y'all can go out there and buy y'all car for cash because you have money that you have put to the side. You don't have to continue to put yourself in debt yeah. for your head to try to figure out if something goes wrong, how we gonna handle all of this. These are the things that we had to learn. Mm -hmm. You know? And the responsibility of the woman too, like, it's a support system. Like, please don't, like the most, the worst thing you could do to a man already in a messed up situation is go to him in the wrong way, in the, with, with the wrong type of attitude. So in everything you gotta deal in love, that's why I was talking about the video last week. It was like, to the people who might not understand or might not know what's going on, like you gotta talk to them in love. Like especially with men, us, like we, we wanna be talked to a certain way. Like certain stuff we consider disrespectful. We might consider like, oh, they don't, what, what she mean? I ain't no, I ain't no Debbie Shane. I ain't, no, I ain't her slave. I ain't this, that, nothing. But you okay, gotta, I'll, yeah, you, you gotta I'll understand. Do. You gotta understand what is actually being talked about. You gotta put everything in context and not just hear one thing and go off that. You gotta put everything together. You gotta understand the hierarchy. You gotta know where your role at and what your position you supposed to be playing in. Even if you fall short, sometimes like you gotta know that you the head. And your, your spouse got to know that you the head. Y'all got to respect each other. And then you got to pull yourself up out of it. So let me talk about You can't about lay up on side your woman and just lay up on side your woman while she's doing it all. Okay, and that's what I was just about <laughs> to talk about. A lot of times respect is lost in a relationship and the woman starts to treat her head as one of the children when she's feeling like she's having to take care of him as the children. When I, when I always was told... You pay the cost to be the boss, right? You pay the cost to be the boss. Meaning, if she bringing in the money, that means that she's making a decision. Now, I'm not saying that that's right, but that's just human nature. How are you going to tell me what to do with money when you're not bringing in any? She's not going to respect you as her head, as an adult, as anything, if you're not contributing in such a manner. And I'm not talking about an odd job here, an odd job there. I'm talking about gainful employment. I'm, and this is this is what I base it on. This is just my, my philosophy. If you went to a job and you worked 40 hours a week and you made minimum wage, that's, that's gainful employment. Meaning this is the standard. That means that you should not be falling below the standard. If you're falling below the standard, then that's a problem because you can't take care of yourself, let alone taking care of a whole family if you're not gainfully employed. Well, you can't, but guess <laughs> what? You, you have to be responsible and say, am I ready for a family and I don't have the means to take care of them? So suppose you're in a position where the children already came and you had them young. You got to come up with different ways to make things happen. I don't care if you have to work a job and you have a hustle on the side. You do what you got to do to make sure that you're able to provide for your family. You don't get to say that, oh, I done worked my 40 hours for $7.50 and this is all I'm bringing in and this is the best that I'm gonna do and I ain't trying to do no better. No, you're supposed to try to do better for yourself and better for your family because there's something called a quality of life and a woman will leave you behind quality of life. She ain't trying to go live in the poor house. Like, but at the same time, like you can't just put all her, so like that's what I, this is where the, the conversation what went off the rails. Last Let's week, go. because it's all about what the woman ain't about to deal with. What women, please don't like, don't go to your man talking about what you're not about to deal with. This, this, that, and the other, because you can't put no monetary value on your love. Like, go to your spouse with a humble heart, willing to talk about what's going on, and work with them and uplift them to get in a better position. That's what you gotta do. Like, but ain't no happiness in poverty. Ain't no happiness in poverty, but if you make a minimum wage, you're in poverty, baby. Yeah, you are in poverty, and that's why my position is you have to do something to get yourself up out of this situation. Yeah, you can, but you gotta Meaning down. that you gonna have to go get you a trade, meaning you <laughs> gonna have to work your job and go get you a hustle, meaning that you gonna have to do something different because you can't expect somebody to stick around to, to live in certain conditions. 
you can't. But if you if you're not gonna help them to better themselves, if you're gonna have an attitude about it, then they gonna not not gonna want to stick around anyway. So the thing about it is, like, you gotta have a loving attitude. You gotta go to people in love because if you go with the attitude like, oh, you gonna do this, that, the other, like, you got to have a positive attitude when you're trying to get somebody to go in a positive direction. I understand that. And that's what that's, but that's not what you're portraying in your description of what 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 this all is supposed to be about. I guess like, my you my get thing to a is because I have, like you get mad. No, I don't get mad. It's just passionate. <laughs> I'm passionate about yeah, what I talk about. But, but this is this is what I'm saying. When you have a certain expectation of okay, quality of life. Everybody have an idea of the way they want to live yeah. their life, right? I'm not saying that. Um, I'm looking to live lifestyles of the rich and famous. No, I'm not saying that. But if I want to go somewhere, I should be able to plan for it and be able to go somewhere. If I want to buy something, I should be able to plan for it and buy it. But if I have somebody that's not ever meeting halfway, then how are those things going to ever but happen? But I mean, you got to understand everybody's situation. Some people just trying to work to pay the pay the light bill. Some people just trying to work to like everybody's situation. That you got to understand everybody won't love, but everybody don't have the means to go out there and provide the whole world for somebody. You see what I'm saying? So if you got somebody, you got to also live within your means. You got to understand what they're capable of providing for you. So if you if you used to live in a certain way, mm -hmm. they're supposed to maintain that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But if you used to a McDonald's wage, a McDonald's lifestyle, if you, if you married him and he was not going to hit a lick of the snake, don't expect him to get up and do a damn thing. That's right, because you married your broke husband. Because he's not going to He is your broke husband, and you're supposed to be right there with your broke husband. You gotta husband. be right there with him. Bert. Because he that's, right that's what you... Right his broke ass because you married him. And he, if he was a crackhead when you married him, please don't try to take him to rehab. He gonna be a crackhead. And he you love not your crackhead crack husband. You love your crackhead husband. That's it. That's what you do. If she was an alcoholic when you met him, in the club every weekend, Please don't try to make her stay in the house and cook for you and, and, and raise kids. She not. She gonna be a drunk every weekend over your stove, burning up your food. But that's when it comes <laughs> down to the choices that we make and being selective in our partners. And that's what I'm, I was trying to tell the men last week. If you meet a woman and she's a really materialistic woman, and at whatever moment you stop being able to bring in that money to be able to for her to be able to do the things that she you, you just used lost to doing, her. you done lost her because you already knew what you had. So you have to pick wisely. You have to get somebody that's going to be loyal to you. You have to get somebody that's going to raise your children up in a certain amount and teach them standards and values and all of this here other and great that's stuff. That's another thing, like mothers. You have to be mothers to your kids because a lot of like that's a whole nother subject. That's a whole nother subject topic for a different a different. Day, mm -hmm. I think, because, like, man, you know, that's a whole that. another mm -hmm. thing, a whole another situation. Like, everybody got a role to play, and people should play it. Like, the woman's role to the with the husband is it's not hard. You just gotta have his back. Nothing else. But with the kids, you gotta raise them. It, that's a job. It is a job. It is. It's but I'm not trying to stay on topic with the uh the, with what you. But uh, yeah. You but I'm. Well, I don't want to move. I, I'm gonna move to the kids. But what I just wanted to make sure I clarify, because a lot of these men was talking about she gonna be going get her hair done, and I ain't gonna be able to get a haircut. Why would you be with somebody that's gonna get go get their hair done like, and maintain this, this, themselves, this the thing, and like, you're not able to maintain yourself? In our situation, like with our situation, when me and her met, I didn't work. I didn't have a job, but I was. What, 18? She was 17. Mm -hmm. Like, our situation was, we were kids. But we came through, we learned through life. Like, we mm -hmm. learned and we had to, like, to go back and do it all over again. In hindsight, it's 2020, you would do a, so much stuff different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you love each other, but we made so many mistakes. So you talk to people and, and, and from experience and the knowledge you gain, you try to teach them how to not fall in some of the pitfalls and stuff that you was in because like her working three jobs when I met her and me just out on the streets getting how I live like that motivated me to go do something different I wanted to be better like man this woman's struggling I and I was 17 with those jobs and I'm out seeing these people streets just wild and foul just doing my own thing I gotta do better and in school so that yeah that's a lot but 
you can you can choose a partner that is driven like y'all know when you meet people if they driven or not yeah you know you already right. know what you're dealing with you know if you meet people if you met them popping pills and all of this <laughs> you can't be surprised if this shit escalate to yeah. you know other types of yeah. drugs and vices you like you i just think that sometimes we make our own life hard yeah, we for make ourselves. Our own we we make things you hard. You deal with people who you know not going to be good for you. You know what I'm saying? Then you end up with a baby. Then you end up, but it happens so young. And mm-hmm. then by the time you realize it, it's too late for you to be the correct of the mistake because you got other lives involved in what you got going on and the mistakes that you have made. But it ain't never too late to do the right thing. That's okay. the kind of situation. So let's talk about these nappy head ass churns. These badass kids. Let me tell y'all something about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna leave yeah, these people man. alone with their children, but they have to have to. With the no respect. They go to the barbershop and, and get their hair. Lord, I don't know who this little boy was this morning. I went to a program, and I hope his mom ain't watching. But he talked the whole time. Little boy, he was about three years old, and she did not tell him nothing. He overtalked the principal at the school. He overtalked the children doing the program. He overtalked everybody. And you never once heard, stop, shh, be quiet. Uh, no, no, no discipline. It was 30 minutes in before you decided to take him out after he didn't see it. Mama, 4,000. Like, we got to teach our kids. When they go out in public, they have to be responsible just like we have. We be responsible. Man. It's so many kids out there like, just excuse me. Man, you, you'd be surprised how often we in public and kids just pass by and bump into you and turn around and look at you like they want to beat you up. <laughs> like, no excuse me, no nothing. Like, you was in their way. And it's small from, like, babies, two, three, four, five, on up to teenagers. Like, we have to teach responsibility. We got to teach respect because that's why our children are killing each other out there. They don't have no respect for each other. They don't have no respect for life. They don't understand that when you kill a person, they're not coming back. They don't understand that them people, family, are going to hurt, and they probably going to be took away from their family. Mm-hmm. So kids need to be taught. Little girls need to be taught that bundles ain't your friend. Like, if you out here and you 13 years old, putting them bundles in your baby hair might turn your, your 13-year-old looking little daughter into a, a 26-year-old looking little girl. So... We gotta be mindful, like you can't be out here letting your children do the, the different poses and stuff. They gotta remain kids as long as they can because that's their job. Yeah, <laughs> because they got the rest of their life to be grown and take on all of this responsibility and stress that, that we're taking on as adults. Um, but one of the other things that we talked about, you know, like with the hierarchy, what who comes first? What comes first? Do, cause let, let me just say this here. Children are selfish by nature, yeah. okay? I don't care how much you take yeah. them to the movies, skating ring, Area 51, you can do all of these great things with them. But the minute y'all decide to take some time to yourself, they will have their mouth stuck out because they can't go. Yeah. And they don't understand. But you have to teach them. Okay, in life there are, there's something called balance. You got time that you spend with your friends. You got time that you spend with your parents. And you got times that you spend alone by yourself. Even as parents, it's called balance. We have time that we spend together as a family. We have times that we spend alone, right? And then, you know, we have times that we spend with our friends. Well, we're not together, but just with our friends. So you have to explain balance to them early on. You should not be feeling bad about going on a date night because your children can't go. And and y'all used to going somewhere. (laughs) You should not feel bad about being intimate with one another because you have children that's sleeping in the next room. And I think, like, I think, I don't, I think people got the wrong perception about that. I think it's so good for children to hear you being intimate with each other. (laughs) He he think it's good. I think it's so good because they learn that if your, if your spouse, if your, if your parents (laughs) love each other. And, and this is how they treat each other. Like, you want them to be intimate with each other. So when they grow up, they don't have a deal. When they do Their learn perspective is different. what it is to be intimate with somebody, they, when they grow up, they're going to learn what it is, you know what I'm saying, to, to have that connection with somebody. Like, that's how it's supposed to be with that one person. Because our children here don't like, care. Yeah. I mean, they let us know about it, but, you know, at the end of the day, they know ain't nothing they can do about it. But, yeah, they here don't here. And the thing is, when they become adults, 
they're going to be able to have healthy marriages and relationships because they know that this is expected and it's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. You don't want your children walking around thinking that you and their daddy are not intimate with each other. That's unrealistic. Yeah. And it's, it's unhealthy mm -hmm. because they get this perception that yeah, when you nice. are mm -hmm. intimate with people that you're being nasty. Being intimate is not nasty. Being intimate is a, an expression of love. Yeah. And the way you you know you care for yeah, each you're other and you, you're supposed to be able to come together. Like, you're supposed to experience each other. Like you're not supposed to teach your kids that that's wrong because when they do get out there, to experience, they're going to experience it with the wrong people because they're trying to know so fast. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is they're going to be very sneaky about yeah. everything that they're doing because you created their perception that intimacy was a bad thing. Yeah. And, and see, like, with our kids, like, our kids are very open. Like, our oldest daughter, she off in college right now. Her and all her toys. But I'd rather her toys than boys. <laughs> so... <laughs> Her and all her toys. <laughs> so she, she she got a collection like she ain't she ain't stolen. But uh yeah, she ain't stolen. <laughs> <laughs> but we but open with our she, kids like she's responsible so. with sex. Like she know like it's something that you supposed to hold on to, it's something to be responsible about. You can't just go out there and go doing it with anybody and and and, 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 and all kind of things come from it. So when you do experience it, it's supposed to be that, that mind blowing, that that I Baby, let me tell you supposed something. to be able to do it My... in all kinds of ways with the person that you love. See, it's quality and not quantity. That's I talked to, to my learn. daughter when she was here <laughs> this last time, and she said that <laughs> she feel like her first time is supposed to um be like she's not saying that she's planning on saving herself into marriage. She said that's not what she's saying. But she want the motherfucker that get her goodies to lay out the red carpet for her. She want them to, she wanted to be like something off the movies, the room or whatever it is supposed to be like decorated. The, the thing's supposed to be right, the rose petals. She is not losing her virginity in the backseat of nobody's car. She ain't losing her virginity in your mama house. And your mama might walk in on them and you done ruined her whole moment. Like, this is supposed to be a, a, a moment that she will never forget. And you know what? That made me feel really good as a parent no. to let me know that she really has standards even when it comes down to and, losing her virginity. And when she loses her virginity, it's going to be to the smartest man. And the smartest man, you know how he going to get him? By making us pay for all that shit in the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Physically, mentally, emotionally. If you want to be with one of my children, you're going to have to invest, son. So tell all your But sons. it's so crazy because people <laughs> look at us and because of the line of work that we're in, they, they, just, ex they, just, ex they just expect our children to be extremely promiscuous. They expect them to be just so eager to give themselves up sexually. But if you teach your children young, that you don't really need somebody else for that type of satisfaction. You can really handle that yourself. That way, then, that you know that you can handle that area in your life for yourself, they gonna have to things. come to you with some other yeah. stuff. Dick ain't gonna keep you. Mm -hmm. Pussy ain't gonna keep you because you know that you can handle that for yourself. So they gonna have to really come with some substance. So you teach them to respect themselves first. And then they respect others. So if the little girl it, 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 telling the little boy that she don't want to give him none and all this type of stuff, he ain't disrespecting her, calling her all kind of bitches and stuff because he feel like that's what he's supposed to do. He respecting what she what she have to offer, which is herself. She trying to wait and respect herself to when he could give her that awesome experience till he know what it is he want out of life, till you know what direction you want to take. My babies ain't about to get with no yes, body indeed. who don't know. And y'all can call it gold <laughs> digging, y'all can call it whatever, but guess it's what? Being responsible. You gonna you gonna lay out the red carpet for mine, cause they they got it from their mama. 
after she got a response from the girl. After I became responsible. Some ratchet places. <laughs> <laughs> But um, so back to back to our topic, you know, the family structure. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to our Facebook Live. We have really went over time. I hope that this video kind of clarifies. Yeah, we had to address that and clarify because I had to do that because I ain't want that one of you salt the bastards out there to try to sneak my wife when I wasn't around because y'all was feeling played by what she had to say. It's it's all good. Everybody got their part and they role to play up in this. So I just need. I'm gonna be honest, you know, because I I get a lot of these inboxes from women and like that one of them really broke my heart. That woman and she was talking about how she lost her job and her husband was still expecting her to come with half the rent. And I'm like, so you don't come with half the rent? What the fuck? He gonna put y'all you in the chair? And I was sudden like, how if you know that this woman look, ain't got no job, how do you expect her to come with the half? Look, What's she supposed to go get the half from? That's not right. We can't. We cannot do shit like that as the head. We cannot be putting our 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 helpmate, our our backbone, our spouse in them type of situation like that's not that's not that's not a good look. At and all. and I, I'm gonna be honest, cause I that's you know, and I'm gonna say this here, and I'm gonna let this be this, cause I know I'm the type of woman I'm not gonna ask for nothing. I I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm not asking because I just feel like you're supposed to already know. I'm not asking. Will I ask? Yeah, she crazy like she. I'm not asking. Um, telepathic and. She like, I'm so no, I don't think any of that. I just feel like you live here too, and you know the responsibilities that come along with living this lifestyle. Yeah, and ain't nobody give everybody, it. but you gotta. Give yeah, but like so my know. thing is, men, stop sitting up there talking about. Oh, well, she ain't told me that she needed help with the light bill. She ain't oh, told well, me she needed help with this. Well, how the fuck you think the lights come on every month if she don't pay the bill? You know, a bill exists if the lights on. Stop making these women have to come to you and ask you, and what you need to do is offer and say, baby, how much is the light bill this month? Baby, how much is this? You the head. You it's automatic. Head. It's automatic. That's supposed to be automatic. Like, you don't have to be so. Like, what? that men supposed to do that. Men supposed to do what? Supposed to come to you and be like, what's going on with this, 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 that, and the other? How many men you think doing that? I hope all of them. We wouldn't be making this video if they was. Well, I mean, that's what they need to do. That's why we're making a video. Because I want to make sure that everybody receiving it and everybody getting it too. Okay, so, before I end this live, ladies, all I need to know, just let me know. Would you much rather him say, sweetheart, what do you need? Or would you rather go to him saying, this is what's due and this is what I need? Would you rather him come to you and say, Baby, how much is this? What do you need? Would you like for him to be the head and take the initiative and say, how much is this this yeah, month? Or do you want to be running up behind him saying, how, uh, this is what I need for this building? I don't want to come Nobody ask him. Wanna do that. Nobody wants to do that. So all I'm saying is men, don't put women in a position where they have to be coming to you and asking. Yeah. Offer. Exactly right. Take the initiative. But I'm trying to tell you, don't tell men to offer. I'm telling you, men supposed to do that. You're not supposed to be offering. That's your job. Okay. You're supposed to be going to do How that. about you do this and say, baby, the light bill came in this month. I need to see that. Yeah. That, that would be even. That's that what I'm saying. Even that's what's supposed to be going on. It's because you give it. Then the like, water bill come, baby. Talk, I need that. But you talking like it's an option. But it's not an option. But I'm just saying that this. Yeah, but you how many these women calling bill yeah. matrix? They self paying the bill. These men is not doing that. If they was doing this, we would not be having this video. Okay, they, they, okay, wait, 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 him come to me. Some men and women are never properly raised or learned from this, okay. Him come to me. Yeah. Some men you need us to tell them, my husband doesn't keep up with bill due dates, but anything I ask him for, he provides. And that's great. I'm just saying that I have an issue with even asking, and it's just a complex that I personally have. I, I'm not asking. That's a complex that you personally I, And I'm telling y'all that this see, is an issue that I personally have. That, 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 that's personal, I have that's an issue, issue with asking for anything. You have to deal with because she ain't going to ask for a glass of water. If I'm not asking for nothing. Broke, and she thirsty. And you just got you. I, I just try to explain it. <laughs> Baby, I ain't no man reader. I ain't know you need a glass of water. So, <laughs> like, she want to do everything for herself. And I got to tell I her, like, to you got you to gotta slow down. You got to stop. If I'm behind you, like, 
Stop. Let me open that door. Don't you oh don't you touch that damn door. I'll be catching it sometime. Like, don't you touch that damn door. <laughs> like you gotta you gotta like when you got a strong willed person like that, a strong minded person, you gotta you gotta step in because they'll go above and beyond and be trying to do your job. So you gotta stop them and be like, hold up. I'm the main round here. Let me let me take the lead on this because that's not your that's not your position. I got it. So do you think the men feel more like a man if they go and actually pay everything they sell? Or do they feel less because they giving the money to the woman to take care of it? No. It doesn't like, matter. I don't think matter. that it should matter. Like long as y'all long as y'all getting it getting it done. Like y'all in agreement, he he taking care of what the hell he need to take care of and you happy and he happy, y'all gotta keep that balance and make sure y'all communicate with each other and make sure if one ain't happy, what what needs to happen? What's what need to go on? Get to the bottom of it. Work put a plan in place. Work towards the goal. That's what you gotta do. With everything, if you're gonna keep making problems for yourself, you're gonna keep making problems. If you go, if you if you got a problem with uh, something he doing or something she doing, and you ain't addressing it, you ain't bringing that to the table, you just letting it go. You ain't helping the situation, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta bring it to the table. You gotta talk about it, even if, ladies, if you don't want to, like, baby, look, you ain't did this, 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 that, and the other, and. This is what's going on. You got to have a conversation. But don't come be like, hey, Joe has something to get out of here. Because you know what? He's going to be pissed off. <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying that's how you talk to men. I, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I, I that's don't, what Joe did in your last week. Like, no, that, hey, that, that, it yeah. wasn't saying you're going to get your ass up like, and go and get a job and you're going to contribute equally or you're going to do 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 No, that's not what I mean. Yeah, but you had some people who quick tempered it and quick to not uh, to not put everything together like you know what what you was trying to say i'm breaking people up last week i was breaking them up yeah because you was, <laughs> you was giving you was giving the woman ammunition to go but hey but you you weren't telling them like this is how it's supposed to go like y'all supposed to be because she was like oh i am he is let me go get his ass right now <laughs> Like, but you gotta put it down. Oh, you gotta put bullshit, it all though. in perspective. Like, it was right, but it just got it gotta go in a certain order. Sometimes I'm a little passionate, and I do understand that. But I had to show him a whole nother video where I was talking about the turbo bullet with the same tone. Yeah, but when you talking to men <laughs> and you're trying to get men to, I was like, just play with your pussy. This is what you do with it. what you're saying, like a man don't want no woman telling him, man, you ain't shit if you ain't doing this, this, that, and the other for your cousin. Never you said you ain't shit. You said, fellas, you gotta me. step it up. That was a nice way of saying, step it up. Never said you're not shit. Say you gotta step it up. I just was. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I never was degrading to any men. No, but the the way you came off, I I I, I understand as a man, like. I want to step in and be like, look, fellas, this is what's going on. Because when you talk, like, when we talk to each other, like, we be respectful. Like, if you don't have no problems or no ill will towards another man, we can sit down and talk to each other and have a, 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 a certain type of tone. It's about your delivery. It wasn't what you were saying. It's how you said it. So it, it came off kind of like you was upset and you was mad at all men, like every man. Not just, you know, the people who not taking responsibility who don't understand. But you got to understand, like, some people don't know. Some people don't understand. Some people still need to learn. Because even when I first started out in our relationship, I didn't know shit about being a man. Uh -uh. I had to learn. Uh -huh. So it's the same thing for men who out there who might feel like, oh, you know what? I'm a man and I don't need nobody to tell me how to act, and, but I ain't doing none of that shit. Like, you got to bring it to them to where they can relate. Uh -huh. So that's that's all I'm saying to, to clarify it and bring it to you where you can relate to it and, and understand exactly what was said. Like it wasn't no coming down on you trying to belittle you or talk talk shit about you. It's telling you your place, and this is your place to be strong, to be the the, the head, to be the leader. Okay. All right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up, Curtis. I hope everything works out for you, brother. I understand you've been paying them bills for the last two months and she's still talking shit to you. We're going to keep you in crowd. Um, <laughs> I want to personally invite all Boy. of the ladies out to the lingerie show October the 4th. 
Uh, this is not your traditional lingerie show. A lot of times people think a lingerie party is where I'm showing a garment and then you're like, oh, I like it, I want to buy it. Oh, no, 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 no. This lingerie show will be epic because this is a Sharonda <laughs> Parker lingerie party. First of all, we're starting off with Mrs. Alexis White, um, female impersonator. Yes, bitches, I got the drag queens coming. Well, I have a drag queen coming. So that's going to be our opening act. Then we're going to have some models lingerie and some sex uh i'm sorry presenting some sexy lingerie let me slow myself down so yes we have miss alexis and then we have some models presenting some sexy lingerie so this is not going to be me holding up lingerie in the box and saying mm -hmm. yeah get this here you're going to have actual live models all shapes sizes, all sizes different body types. body types actually modeling lingerie so that you can see this can be you too then i'm going to be talking about some different things that you can do to enhance your bedroom, this will not be a full blown out fun party because that's not what it's about. This is about you bringing sexy back with yourself. Meaning that you know how you come to the bedroom, how you present yourself. Cause I don't care how much men say, oh, come naked, come naked, come naked. Yeah. Every man wanna see something pretty. You know, that's yeah. just like me giving you a gift. Y'all can just give you a gift. But I think you really enjoy unwrapping the present. Yeah, just make it crotchless. Yeah, make it crotchless. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, like, I, and I'm just one of them pe people, like, you can give me a gift, and I can give my husband a gift, but it's so much fun when I give you a gift that's wrapped up, yeah. you know, when I'm wrapping the prize up, and you got to take your time and unwrap it. So just, you know, just teaching you about different ways to keep it sexy, and just, you know, basically getting into the, um, the mindset of men and different things because men are visual you know a lot of times you wonder why is I wandering because you know you sitting over here and all you want to talk about I'm going natural and I ain't knocking the natural ladies but even if that shit natural you still got to do something with it yeah, I got, yeah, you know what I'm saying you can't thing. be walking around and everything natural all your armpits natural the pussy natural everything <laughs> natural come on I, I want to talk about all of that kind of stuff so we're going to be addressing it and then we're going to end the show with some other entertainment, you know, but you're gonna have to come to see because this is gonna be a night full of all types of entertainment. And of course, I'm gonna have some nice light bites here for y'all and some thought juice for y'all. So y'all come on out, this event is a free event, meaning that you just have to have a ticket to come. But bitch don't come broke. And I'm letting it be known that I'm coming with the expectation that you're gonna spend some money because I ain't charging no admission, but bring your coin so that you can tip the entertainment. Bring your coins so that you can leave here with some of this stuff to turn up in your bedroom. Bring your coins and wash a monkey before you come. That concludes Sex Talk with Sharonda. I want y'all to have a wonderful, awesome Wednesday. And I want y'all to also have a wonderful, awesome Wednesday. And I just like how she threw that off in there at the end. <laughs> oh, so, I'm going to put that on the shirt. And <laughs> All right, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Wednesday. And if you need to uh, find this video, just look on YouTube because this one be, will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. Okay. Later on. Later on. Later on. All right. So look, y'all watch how I go. Keep the love up and that. Don't be running to the niggas. I'm like, motherfucker, you better go and give me the word. I want a Bentley tomorrow. <laughs>